a law and civil level 3 students. I am El Senior Ghana from Ungugulo of Tibet Colleges. I'm going to present a maths lit lesson on topic 2 space, shape, and orientation. The learning outcomes of this lesson are as follows. You will be able to use correct vocabulary regarding space and shape. You will also be able to use appropriate instrument or tool when measuring. You will be able to do basic calculations such as converting Fahrenheit to degrees Celsius. The previous knowledge, that is the knowledge that you come with from level two. Remember this topic is a continuation of level two work. From level two, you were engaged with general terms used in this topic, such as, so this means that in level two, you did touch on these uh, terms, the dimensions. The dimensions are the length, the width, and the height of objects. The units. The unit is the magnitude of any physical quantity, such as the length. Therefore, the unit to measure the length is a meter. Faces. You were told or you know that a face of a, a, a geometric figure is the flat, the flat part of a prism. The attributes. The attributes are the characteristics such as the volume, the temperature, the mass of an object, the length, width, and those geometric figures like rectangles and triangles. From this understanding, I'm giving you two minutes to do the following so that I can be assured that you can recall what we have done in level two. You are going to name and classify geometric shapes into 2D and 3D shapes, two-dimensional and three-dimensional shapes. Number two, you are going to add objects within your immediate environment, like your classroom, your school, your neighborhood, your village, or your town. Solutions, you are expected 
to have done like this. These are your two Ds that are classified on this side and the three Ds that are classified this side. You will have your triangle, your circle, your square, and your rectangle. On the 3D side, that is the three-dimensional figures, you'll have your pyramids or a cone, your square, your, your sphere, your cube, and your cuboid. A cuboid is something that is something, sometimes referred to as a rectangular prism. Then for the second one, the examples from your immediate environment. You have your cylinders. What are the cylinders from your immediate environment? It has, those are the, the candles, the pipes, the batteries. These are found in these environments, the home, shops, and classrooms. Then the spheres. The spheres are the atlas globes that are normally found in your classroom, your soccer ball, your golf ball, all these things are found in the school, home, or the golf course. The cubes, these will be the boxes, the die, the dice, the dice which are found at home, school, and the shop. The rectangular prism, the one that I said they are the cuboids. Those will be the books, the books, the encyclopedia, the fridges, the buildings, like your library, they're found in the school, they're found in your home, your neighborhood, uh, your neighbor's block of flats, and the town hall. Then the rectangles. These are your tennis court, which are found in the school or town. Circle, that is the traffic circle, that is found in town. Triangle, the road signage, such as the stop sign. Right. Lesson part one. Today's lesson is divided into two parts. So now we are in lesson part one, which deals with the following. In this lesson, you are going to focus in developing further the vocabulary for space, shape, space and shape as follows. You must know what is meant by the, uh, by the term or the uh, base. What is a base in this regard? A base is the side on which that geometric figure rests on. We call that a base. The perimeter. The perimeter is the distance around the object or going around the object. The midpoint. The midpoint. It is the point in the middle of a line or a line segment. Therefore, the midpoint will divide in a line into two equal parts. The diagonal or diagonals. A diagonal is a line that is drawn from that joins two opposite vertices. That's a diagonal. The area, that is the space occupied by an object. The angles, that is the distance between two lines that meet at a, at, at a point. Parts of the circle. There you have a circle. The circle has the following parts. The center of the circle. This is the center of the circle. This is the center of the circle. The radius. The radius. When we have only one, we say that one is a radius. This is a radius. One line. That comes from the center. It's a line drawn from the center to the circumference 
of the cell, of the cell. A line drawn from the center to the circumference of the circle, that is a ra radius. So when we are having many radiuses, we call them radii. It's like for instance, this other one, from this part, from the center, from the center to the circumference, that is another radius. Here from the center to the circumference. So in this example, we've got three radii that are drawn. Remember, a circle has infinite number of radii. So you can't, there's, there's infinite, you can't, uh, there's no limited number of uh, the, 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 the radii. Then the diameter, same as with the radii. There are infinite number of, of diameters in a circle, but they are all equal. A, a diameter is a line drawn from the circumference to the other side of the circum, uh, circumference. It is a line drawn from the circumference through the center to the other side of the circumference. That is a radius, a, a diameter. We can also draw a diameter from this side, from this circumference, through the center to the other side of the circumference. Then the, what is the circumference? The circumference is the boundary of the circle. That is the circumference, is the boundary of the circumference of the circle. Then we have got uh, number two, e, three is lines. The point of intersections. When, a, when line, when two lines meet we, at a point, we say that point is the point of intersection. Then we have what we call perpendicular lines. A perpendicular line is a line that would meet another line at 90 degrees or at right angles. Then we have what we call parallel lines. Uh, parallel lines are lines that keep equal distance between them. Then we have a transversal. That is the line that part through parallel lines. From what we have covered so far, let me give you a practice activity for about one minute. Number one, you draw a rectangle A, B, C, D with a diagonal AC. You are going to draw a rectangle ABCD with a diagonal AC. Number two, you draw R a midpoint of line segment PQ. Number three, you draw line AB perpendicular to CD perpendicular to CD with B on CD. This is the sign that we use for perpendicular. Line MN is parallel to X line XY, and they are cut by transversal AB. Solution, there is a parallel uh, rectangle ABCD cut by a transversal AC. You can see that this line 
is drawn from this vertex to this other vertex. So it is joining two vertices. They are, so we can, it means we can also draw another transversal, which is BD, because we've got this vertex here formed by line AB and BC. This vertex can join to that one. So we can also have another vertex there, BD, but it was not asked. Then number two, the midpoint R. R is the midpoint of line PQ, meaning that PR is equal to RQ, meaning if it is five centimeters, if PR is five centimeters, RQ will also be equal to five centimeters. Number three, you are drawing AB perpendicular to line CD, and B is on CD. Look at it. There is the line AB. There is the sign to show that this line AB meets the line CD at right angles. So it is perpendicular to uh, CD. Number four, line MN is parallel to XY. You could see that the distance between these two lines is constant. It is equal on each and every point. If it is two centimeters, it will be two centimeters all over. Then this is the line AB, the line cutting two parallel lines. Right. Now let's proceed to part two of our lesson. Part two of our lesson is, this part of a lesson deals with the instruments or tools that are going to be used in this topic. So in this topic, you are going to be using measuring instruments to measure different attributes of objects. So measuring instruments like the ruler and the protector. There is your ruler on the other side. So you must know when to use your ruler and when you use your protector. Your protector is used when you're measuring angles, but your ruler is used to measure the distance or the line. Measuring tape, there is your measuring tape there. Measuring scale. In mathematics, we use scales to measure. Measuring jack, like when if you are want to use a measuring scale, when you, when, when you want to measure weight, for instance, you can use a measuring scale uh, or mass. Measuring jack is when you use a, a kettle to measure or a liter bottle to measure the amount of water. Then the thermometer. The thermometer there, it is written there. The thermometer is calibrated or is marked with Fahrenheit or degrees Celsius. Celsius. Then the other, the next one is the speedometer. The speedometer is measured the speed found in cars, trains, etc. Now, let's get an example of how you are going to use a thermometer that has different units, the Fahrenheit and the Celsius. For temperature, the scientists or the mathematicians discovered that there is a formula to calculate to find out the, to calculate the, 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 the Celsius and the Fahrenheit. Degrees Celsius is equal to open brackets, degrees uh, Fahrenheit minus 32 degrees, close brackets, 5 over 9. This is the relationship that you will get when you want to find, to calculate any of those. From previous knowledge, you know how to make the other one the subject of the formula. So it is possible to find the Fahrenheit if you are given the Celsius using that equation. For example, 
If you want to convert 340 degrees Fahrenheit to degrees Celsius, you do the following. You use your equation for temperature, which is degrees Celsius is equal to open bracket degrees Fahrenheit minus 32 degrees, close bracket, 5 over 9. What we want to do is we want to convert the degrees Fahrenheit, 340 degrees Fahrenheit, to degrees Celsius. Therefore, use the formula. There is your solution. Degrees Celsius is equal to, here is your, you write down the equation. You substitute for degrees Fahrenheit, which is 340 minus 32 divided by that one, times that one. Therefore, that is your answer. Uh, one, uh, 171 degrees, 171,11 degrees. Students, from the practice activities that we have done, let us add some so that we may make sure that we do understand what we have been doing. We are going to do them on the board. Number one, we have got a figure here, A, B, C, D, E. It has five sides. It's called the Pentagon. Then we are required to draw the diagonals in this pentagon. How many diagonals are we going to draw? Right, I said that a diagonal is a line that is drawn from between two opposite vertices. The vertices must be opposite. It can be drawn from that side to that, this side. They must be opposite. Like, for instance, this is the first vertex that we can draw. This is the first diagonal. That's another diagonal. There is another diagonal. Opposite vertices. There is another diagonal. There is another diagonal that we can draw. There is another diagonal that we can draw. So, those are the, some of the diagonals that we can draw in this figure. So, these are the diagonals. Diagonals in, in this uh, geometric figure, A, B, C, D, E. The next thing is the midpoint. The midpoint. I said the midpoint divides the line into two equal parts. Say, for instance, we've got this line here. This line is xy. If they want you to divide this line into two equal parts, or if they want a midpoint, if you want a midpoint, you want a point that will make these two lines, uh, uh, that will decide, divide this, this line into two equal parts. Therefore, we said this is 50 centimeters. Therefore, your midpoint will be there. Your midpoint P will be there such that this line here from XP, from this point to that point is 25 centimeters, and this one is 25 centimeters, because the whole line is 50 centimeters. So P is dividing XY into two equal parts, that is, two equal line segments, XP and PY, which are both 45. Then, the next part we come to is the perpendicular line. Perpendicular line. 
He said a perpendicular line is a line that meets the other point at the other line at 90 degrees. As for instance, here is a line. This is the line MN. Any line that will be perpendicular to MN should cut at MN at right angles. It must come directly at 90 degrees. Like for instance, if you can draw it, you can draw it even here. As long as we can draw it here, this is PQ. The line PQ is perpendicular to MN because it meets this line at 90 degrees. How do you know that it meets at 90 degrees? Because of that small square there. This small square indicates that this line comes here at 90 degrees. All right. That is not the only thing that we have learned. We have also learned that you are able to manipulate or change any value from the Fahrenheit to Celsius or from Celsius to Fahrenheit. Now let's try to find out how much it would be if you have 150 degrees Celsius. Try to convert 150 degrees Celsius to, to Fahrenheit. This let us also do it on the board. Convert 150 degrees Celsius to degrees Fahrenheit. We know we have got an equ equation. The equation that we use is degrees Fahrenheit, uh, degrees Celsius is equal to open bracket degrees Fahrenheit minus 32 close brackets 5 over 9. So this is equal to 9 over 5 degrees Celsius is equal to degrees Fahrenheit minus 32 degrees. Therefore, Fahrenheit, degrees Fahrenheit is equal to 9 over 5 degrees Celsius per plus 32 degrees. Plus 32 degrees. This is how we are going to work it. Now you can substitute the degrees Celsius, which is equal to 9 over 5 times 150 degrees plus 32 which is equal to, you use your calculator to work out that, which is 9 divided by 5 times 150 is equal to 270 degrees plus 32 degrees, which is equal to plus 32 degrees is equal to 300 and two degrees Fahrenheit. So now, you could also be able to convert degrees Celsius to degrees Fahrenheit using that same equation. Thank you very much, level three. Until we meet again, thank you.